Thanks to the supporters of channel member Brian Glick. Folks, at most we are three, maybe four weeks away from the FM22 beta at this point. If you've not yet pre-ordered your copy, and what are you waiting for in order to get the beta, you need to pre-order. Although, to be fair, you can do it once the beta's out. So let's not do false scarcity as part of this trying to get you to spend money thing. But if you are looking to pick up FM22 at any point between now and when the game comes out, just a gentle reminder that I do have a discount code that gets you 10% off of the existing 10% that Sports Interactive are giving you. The RRP of the game is $39.99. During the pre-order period, it's $35.99, buying directly through Steam and Sports Interactive. But if you use my discount code LELUJO at 2game.com, link down in the description below, you get a further 10% off that, bringing it in at £32.39. It's cheaper than Steam. It's a Sega-approved retailer, which means you do get access to the beta as soon as it's out, and it also supports the channel and I really appreciate everybody who's used it so far or still plans to use it. It is a big difference maker to the business and allows me to do things like pay for the fancy graphics and music and stuff like that that I'm trying to get set up ready for the FM22 series is that are going to be coming soon. It's all interlinked and interwoven and the link's at the top of the description. Hello, welcome to part 18 of Rebuilding Barcelona. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have our final two Champions League group games because I figured they were the most important things to show you. The, the La Liga, the La Liga, I sound like the game. Um, La Liga is going pretty well, as you can see. Um, we're nine points clear at the top now. We beat Real Madrid pretty comfortably in the last episode, but we did lose to Manchester United for the second time in the group stage. And our Champions League qualification is looking a little bit ropey. We have to win both of these games. If we win both of these games, we're through in second place. If we don't, we might be facing a future of Thursday night football. So we have Lazio up first, I think, which is massive um, because Lazio are the team that we're chasing. We actually go above Lazio if we beat them in this match because we'll be ahead of them on head-to-head. -head. Um, but then in the final match, we play Sporting, which should be a win, while Lazio play Manchester United, which theoretically should lead to them losing it should all be okay but i would have expected to pick up some points against manchester united as well so let's not take anything for granted the other news of course um is i have a player signing set up ready to come just showing you the last couple of results so you know what's been going on um uh, we have a player signing set up to come in in january we have spent the large majority of our transfer budget the money hasn't actually left our account yet though as you can see so uh, financially, things still looking very, very good, but we're going to have £50 million or so coming off that in January because we have signed a midfielder and his name is Declan Rice. Um, I know I was looking at uh, Kessie in the last episode, uh, but in the end, Rice came up on a, on a scouting report at pretty much the same time. If you've watched my Leicester series earlier in the year or any of the streamer showdowns, you'll know I very much have a soft spot for Declan Rice. I think he is a cracking player in FM, plays the roles that I'm looking for him to play. He's very good at that box-to-box -box midfield role. Um, he can also sit behind the uh, the midfield too as a holding midfielder and also, crucially, should allow me to send Joel Matip back to Liverpool because he can also act as a fourth centre-back, centre-back cover, both him and De Jong with the ability to play centre-back makes me feel a little more comfortable about only having three recognised centre-backs at the club. So, Ticks a lot of boxes. If you look at the comparison between him and Kessie, they are very similar players. You get a little bit more physicality out of Kessie, but a little bit more um, just technical ability and and like mental stuff out of out of Rice. Um, and with Rice being a couple of years younger, I'm not sure how old Kessie is actually. I think Kessie's 26, Rice is 24. What does it say up there? Kessie 26, Rice 24. Um, so he's got. Potential to improve as well. His star rating is currently higher and he will get better. And we certainly weren't the only big club that were in for Declan Rice. Um, it's still only 13 England caps, which is a little bit of a surprise. He's not played for England yet this season. It is only the 29th of November. Um, but I think that's a very, very important signing. Him and De Jong in central midfield, I think that is a Champions League winning central midfield partnership. So Declan Rice will be in in January. 
Um, it does mean most of the budget is gone. And realistically, I'm not sure what else we could have got when it comes to adding players to the squad anyway. Central midfield is definitely where we needed a body. And we now have a body coming in. But we don't get to meet them until next episode. For now, let's make sure that Declan Rice is joining a Champions League club. This is the team that we're going to be sending out there against Lazio in a must-win game. To Stegen in goal, a back for of Baldi, Sula, Garcia and Papetti. As you can see, the right-backs are all still injured. Um, can't even see Dest. Where's Dest? Dest is there. Dest is on the bench, still not fully fit. Uh, Porro's still red injured, so not able to take back. Grimaldo injured as well. We are distinctly lacking in full-backs. Um, I know a lot of you have said in the comments from yesterday's episode, when I'm playing Papetti at right-back, I really shouldn't have him as a wing-back on attack. I, I do get it to a point, uh, but at the same time, I don't want to completely unbalance and change the squad around. Um, yeah, he's not particularly great going forward, but he's got the physicality you need to be able to be up and down that right-hand side all day long. If he's just charging up and down there, making a nuisance of himself, I can I can live with that. Um, he's quick, he's strong. Yeah, he can't really cross. Yeah, he can't really shoot. But yeah, I, I don't mind him as an attacking wing back. Putting him on a more defensive role means we're going to miss out on a lot of the width further forward. Pedri doesn't really fit in, I don't think, without someone bombing past him and overlapping. So we're going to have to put Fatty over this side. Uh, then we lose the ability to have him cutting in. What do we do on the left? I guess Memphis could come in on the left like he often does. But then the midfield's unbalanced as well. It's just a whole thing. I'd rather just leave it in a system that we know works. We know is nicely balanced. If there's a player who's not quite suited to his role, then so be it. We've got another one in midfield with Gundogan who's not quite suited to the role that he's playing. But Declan Rice is going to be coming along very soon to fix that problem. So, to Stegen in goal, Baldi, Sula, Garcia, Papetti at the back. Gundogan and De Jong in midfield. Fati, Isco and Pedri behind Tammy Abraham up front. We need to win. Anything other than a win... And it's, I don't know if it would be, math, I mean, I guess, yeah, mathematically, it would be Thursday night football, I think. We must win. This is the definition of a must win game. So oh, I've still got the stream of showdown stuff on. Oh, my word. We looked at it on yesterday's episode. We talked about it on my stream last night. I need to remember to take that stuff off. I'm just like an extended advert for the stream of showdown at this point. Unacceptable. <laughs> um, Although, on that note, make sure you are following them on Twitter and Twitch and everywhere else. The Streamer Showdown's great. But I want to stop advertising them sometime soon. Um, Tammy Abraham with an audacious lob from just inside the area, but it just it hits the top of the crossbar. It doesn't quite come down quickly enough to properly threaten the goalkeeper. It remains nil-nil, which leaves us still three points behind Lazio. And uh, like I say, this won't be good enough. I'm not actually sure on the mathematical permutations of if we draw today and then we beat Sporting while they lose to United, we'll then end level on points. I don't really want to find out what happens in that circumstance. We win both games, we're through. That's all that matters. Um, although it is Lazio in here, but Sula um, with the comfortable clearance and Lazio still 20 minutes in, yet to have a shot. Long may that continue, although it's not particularly useful if we don't grab a goal at the other end. Half an hour gone, we haven't looked... Very likely to do that just yet. Baldi then to Ansu Fati, who's dropping deep to play it back into Baldi again, who's looking for some room to run into for Everfold. Gundogan with the ball over the top for Fati. This is lovely football, but Fati cutting inside, not quite providing the end product that you need to get past the goalkeeper, and it remains nil-nil. Ten minutes left now in this first half, and it's De Jong in a crossing position, but he messes up. Papetti's uh, forward to take the throw and now Garcia has been skinned by Immobile and Tostegan needs to make the save. That is the first real danger moment of this match and Lazio, I guess, that was the best chance of the game for them, which is, I, I mean, it's not ideal. We need to be winning. Right, who is this with the op opportunity to break away? I haven't seen a shirt number on him. Isco doing some decent pressing work, uh, but it's not enough to win the ball back and Lazio's attack continues and this is a a worrisome highlight. Right, Pedri now with the opportunity to clear. He does, but it just ends the highlight. It was on, it, not only a worrisome highlight, it was an odd highlight. Lazio playing the flatback six, and it is proving pretty difficult to break down. They know they can just come here and defend. Italian teams, 
quite good at that. Luckily, I don't think I've got any previous experience of being knocked out of European competitions by Lazio on this channel ever, ever, ever. So fingers crossed, we should be okay. Although we are getting deeper and deeper into this game and still not looking like making a breakthrough. Manchester United 4-1 up over Sporting, I guess, works in our favour. Oh, it doesn't really matter one way or the other, I don't think, that match. Right, we need changes. Uh, Memphis Depay is coming on. He's going to come on for... See, I was going to take off Isco, but he's the only attacking player who's had anything close to a decent game. I was going to go to a to a 4-2-4, but there's not really anywhere to put Isco if we did that, unless we drop him back into central midfield instead of Gundogan, maybe. Which, I guess, theoretically, he should be able to do. So maybe we will do that. If we drop Isco back there, and then... Gundogan can come off and Depay can go up front with Tammy Abraham. So we'll do this. A little bit more attacking. We are going to go attacking as well. Anyone who watched the home series this should be a very familiar tactic to you. Um, Demir is going to come on on this side, but as a winger rather than in a... In fact, what foot does he use? Left-footed. You can be an inside forward then. Actually, no. Stay as the inverted wing. We had you up before. That's fine. And... We've also got Pedro and Torres on the bench. Torres is nervous. That kind of rules him out. We're going to give Tammy a little bit longer, so we're not going to bring Pedro on yet either. Come on, boys. Demand more. Goal is a must at this point. Isco with the free kick, but it's plucked out of the air by the Lazio goalkeeper. And, hmm, it's, it's not, we're not looking likely to make a breakthrough at the moment, are we? Where are all those goals from Real Madrid? In fact, Tammy Abraham is in and it's a bit of a scuffed finish, but it makes it past the goalkeeper all the same. Barcelona won, Lazio nil. We need to undo those changes immediately. In fact, we can probably still shuffle around and reassemble this into a into the same tactic we were using before. It's a lovely ball over the top from De Jong. Abraham, I, I think I've done him a disservice saying it was a scuffed finish. He's dinked it over the goalkeeper nicely. And we're going to take off one of these attacking players. I think it probably has to be Fatty so that we can get another midfielder in. Although we're a little bit light on midfielders. Um, so rather than doing that, perhaps we'll just... Uh, we'll do this. Demir can go in there, Depay out onto that side, Fatty onto this side, and we don't have to change the personnel then, just in case we need to we need to go back to our more attacking system. But we have grabbed the goal, and crucially, as you can see, that goal does lead to us leapfrogging Lazio, meaning that then everything is back in our hands going into the final game. Right, Fatty is tiring. Um, we've got... Torres on the bench, but Fatty's now playing on the... In fact, Torres can go into the attacking midfield slot, so that's fine. We can do that. Uh, Torres can slot into his uh, more favoured role as the attacking midfielder. Demir can go back out onto the right-hand side. United now 6-2 up over Sporting. Sporting are putting up a fight, but it's, it seems to be pretty ineffective. And um, They've grabbed a couple of goals, but it doesn't really matter. If we can grab a second hit here, that makes these final three minutes a little bit more comfortable. Isco has given the ball away, though. And Lazio have got the opportunity for a counter-attack. Papetti's just hit him hard. And I'm I'm happy with that. I don't mind that. At this stage of the game, I'd even have taken a red card just to stop the attack. The three points are more important than keeping 10 men on at this stage. Isco with a risky pass for this stage of the game, but it finds Baldi, uh, who, will, who in turn finds De Jong. And now Demir is in. And Demir is there with the finish. And that rubber stamps things. And I thought the ref was going to disallow it. He has disallowed it. We didn't get a replay. Presumably it was offside, but we've absolutely dominated and we deserved more than the 1-0 victory, but it doesn't really matter how the three points came. The crucial thing is, come, they did. And that's what the group looks like. One game to go. You're going to see that coming up next. I'll play the league game in between offline. Manchester City won 10-0 over Malmo. Yikes. And the majority of the goals, were they 8-0 up at half time. Wowzers. A good, decent night in Manchester. Both of them playing at home in the Champions League on the same night, which seems odd in and of itself. And 16 goals scored between them. We could only muster one. Rubbish. In between the game played then against Elche. Um, those of you who like the youth development side of things will love the team we finished this game with. 
Um, we, I mean, we started Nico, but by the end of the game, it was Nico and Gavi in midfield. Um, and then we had Demir there and Ihatarin out on the right side, who actually went and scored uh, with the fourth goal. So we had a very, very young uh, midfield four in there. Um, but we rotated a little bit, which means we're able to go back to our full strength team for this very important game against Sporting. We just need to make sure we at least equal Lazio's score against Manchester United. And this is the team we're going in with. It's Testagan in goal, a back four of Baldi, Sula, Garcia and Dest, who is now fit again. And he played in the previous league game as well. Uh, De Jong and Gundogan in midfield, Fati, Isco and Pedri behind Tammy Abraham up front. Tammy Abraham scored like a 35-yard screamer in that previous league game. He uh, he just seems to... He's, he's, a diff, he's a different man in a Barcelona shirt. The Barcelona shirt just makes him play like a Barcelona player, which is a really wonderful thing. Right, we're getting a highlight from kickoff here, which is a little unusual. Are we going to go straight up there and score, or are we going to give away a goal immediately just to make things nice and interesting? Please don't let it be option two. Isco playing it out to Fatty. Fatty gets the ball under control and he's now charging towards goal. Oh, my word. He, I don't know, is that a save as he hit the post? Either way, it's a thunderous effort inside the first 30 seconds of the game. Very nearly putting us ahead, but we've moved straight into a second highlight. Pedri now playing it back to De Jong and now Gundogan and De Jong again. And Dest has got a huge amount of space on this right-hand side. Crosses in looking for Abraham, but can't find him. Um, and now Sula playing it back out to Baldi again, who's going to uh, look to get across him from this side. In fact, plays it to Gundogan and now De Jong. Baldi's getting a nice little run in the team with all the other fullbacks being injured. And Fatty now finally does grab his goal. It's only his second goal of the season. He's uh, He has been... I mean, we're, we're at a difficult stage with Fatty and Pedri and Memphis, really, as a three. I, I like Isco as my attacking midfielder. He was one of our better players last year. He always performs well, so I'm kind of set on Isco as the attacking midfielder for now, which means to fit, you can't really fit Pedri, Fatty, and Memphis all in the same team. Memphis is our top scorer currently, but Fatty and Pedri are obviously the future. Um, Memphis is 29, I think, but it's a little bit harsh when he's having, I thought we'd conceded there, it's a little bit harsh when he's having his best season in a Barcelona shirt and he's the top scorer in La Liga currently. It's a little bit harsh to leave him out for these big games. But I'm looking at that front four and there's none of them that I want, that I would want Memphis in ahead of. So he's he's kind of the, the fifth man up there at the moment and doesn't really have a role. Obviously, we are rotating a lot. You saw that he played in that league game and he's still going to get plenty of football. Isco is 31 now, I think. So he's not going to be playing every game and we occasionally drop him back into central midfield and we're slowly but surely phasing him out anyway. I guess, well, we should. We haven't been. That was the plan for the season. That's why Torres came in, but Torres hasn't really impressed yet. But yeah, um, I guess it's one of those nice cliche, nice things to have. And the really useful thing about Memphis is he can come in for any of those four. It's not that he's only back up for one of those positions. He's kind of first reserve for all four of those attacking positions. And it's a nice player to be able to bring on with 20, 25 minutes to go just to run at people. So I guess let's not complain, eh? Um, Dest on the right-hand side. It ends up with Pedri. Pedri playing it back to De Jong. A second goal would be nice now. We're 1-0 up, but 1-0 is always pretty scary. I haven't even checked in on what Lazio are doing against Manchester United, presumably losing like the rest of us have. Uh, Baldi to Fatty, and now Baldi again. Um, Sula now getting forward and getting involved in the attack. Fatty brings it down nicely. I think he's offside. And either way, he's rattling the frame of the goal again. Uh, Manchester United Lazio is nil-nil. I mean, it's in Rome. So we could do United just stepping up and grabbing themselves a goal in that game. They've looked unbeatable in the games that we've played against them. But if Lazio managed to hold them to a draw, I'll be sad. Right, we've got some tired legs. Abraham needs to come off, so... This is what I'm talking about. First reserve, Memphis Depay can come straight. In fact, we're probably going to move him out wide in a second anyway. Although, are we? Pedri's going to come off as well, but I could bring on Pedro, but I think it's probably more sensible to bring on Yusuf Demir. So we'll do this, and that will do as a first change. Give Tammy Abraham and Pedri a little bit of a rest and give Memphis 
another run out playing as a centre forward for us. Um, Gundogan and Isco and Dest now all tired. Um, Dest, I guess, is the obvious one to take off because he has been, he's only just recovering from injury. Um, so Papetti can come on for Dest and fingers crossed we managed to hold on. That's very much a protecting the player's fitness substitution rather than a trying to make sure we win the game substitution. So fingers crossed it doesn't end up backfiring. We have got more attacking options down on the bench. We could have had Torres or Pedro coming on there for some tired attackers. But I think we're kind of working on the assumption that the match is already won. And if Demir had been paying attention, Memphis was in, in space and perfectly positioned for a through ball there. But... Demir doesn't find him. It remains 1-0 to us with 10 minutes to go and the constant danger of a sporting goal, which as long as Lazio don't win, isn't a massive problem. But uh, you only need a goal for sporting and a goal for Lazio and all of a sudden we're back on Thursday nights again and that's hideous. Utterly hideous if we're ending up on Thursday nights. Although I guess you'd probably expect us to win that. Having got to the semi-final of the Champions League the last two years, we'd definitely be able to win the Europa League. We might be about to find out. Daniel James, of all people, scoring for Sporting. It's 1-1. Now all that needs to happen for this swing to complete is a goal for Lazio against Manchester United. Please, can we have a Manchester United goal? Please and thank you. All eyes on that game. I think we've got away with it. I hope we've got away with it. We've got away with it. My goodness, we have made hard work of this Champions League group. We've qualified. We've actually qualified with a negative goal difference. We have not performed well in this Champions League group this year. If I was in, in charge of Barcelona, I would be asking questions about why our Champions League form has been as poor as it has been this year. Um, if we just jump back onto the group... We've only won two of our six group games and finished on a negative goal difference. Really laboured to draws against uh, both Lazio and Sporting in our away games against them. It's not good enough, is it, really? It's going to be very interesting to see if we manage to make it through to the semi-finals again. I don't think we're getting the, the knockout round draw. Let me just jump back into the Champions League again. I think only half the groups have played, possibly. Uh, group stage, all groups. Yeah, not all the groups have played yet, so we're not going to get the draw today. You'll find out in tomorrow's episode who we're going to be playing and whether or not we can have another deep Champions League run. The board are looking for a quarterfinal minimum, so fingers crossed we can deliver that to keep the board happy. And, you know, with Declan Rice being added to the team, I think he is potentially a missing piece of the jigsaw um, as a real proper box-to-box -box force in central midfield or potentially you do I don't even know if we'll use him or De Jong as the box-to-box -box. thankfully both of them can play both roles so two very good central midfielders I think is was the missing piece so we might end up storming the Champions League in the second half of the season that might be a little hopeful if you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.